Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Project C. I am your host Sina Gyasi. Today I've got my very good friends in the house, Ian and Troy. Say hello to the cameras boys. Hello, how's it going? Good. This is Troy. Ian's uh, um, my jiu-jitsu coach. Jiu-jitsu friend. Jiu-jitsu friend, jiu-jitsu family. And Troy's a fellow Mac One um, member down at um, Mac One uh, Fight Club. And uh, the reason I've asked both guys to be on today well, Ian was actually a little bit nervous to do this podcast by himself. See my hand. So, Tro- <laughs> Jesus, that's yeah. a lot of sweat. Um, so, Troy's here for uh, moral support. Ian was actually meant to be on here last week, but he got a little bit stage fright, which is uh, a little bit weird because that, you're so man. confident in everything in life. So, I don't know why you got nervous to do this, but it's okay. We're here. We're doing it now. So, um, yeah, the reason I told um, Ian I wanted to do a podcast with him is because Ian's quite a um, interesting individual. He's, uh, for a young guy, accomplished a lot in his life so far. And um, he, he's got a very similar thought process to me in the sense of spirituality and um, things he's ex- experienced in life. So I, I wanted to talk to him about it and let the world hear what he's got to say as well. So um, how long have you been in living in Perth now? So actually, I'm in Australia. Yeah. One year. Mm-hmm. So have been a great experience. Uh, I came here pretty much to learn English, but as soon as I see all the culture here, all the environment, all the beautiful place to visit. Beautiful women. I don't want to say, but... You can say whatever you like. No, you, say first, you said first. Yes. So when I, when I realized I, I could have a good time here, um, I tried to stay yeah. longer. Yeah. So I'm here one year now. Yeah. Having a great time. Extending that? Maybe. Let's see. I'm hoping you do. Yeah. I want to stay here for good. Maybe. Yeah. It would be great. <laughs> you guys have uh, been living together, Troy. How's that been? What's it like? Because <laughs> uh, living with Brazilian... Well, I've been in Brazil twice. I know exactly what Brazilians are like. For people who don't know, give you your uh, description of what first, it's like. First, to say I'm improving. All right. I'm getting yeah. better. Well, you can't... <laughs> Jesus. Are yeah. oh, we allowed to tell the truth here? You go yeah, tell the truth. But, but tell first I'm getting better. I'm improving each day. Okay, yeah. Well, he's getting better. <laughs> he's... Start with the positive, sure. He, it's taken him a while to learn how to properly clean up after himself. <laughs> Ian's... Uh, you can cut this <laughs> video, <laughs> I'm not cutting shit. Ian's idea of wiping down benches, benches and cleaning up after himself is a lot different to mine. Has he just blowing them up? Well, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> That's good. I'm not going to go too much into it because I know I'll make him... My dishwasher is better than Troy. Okay. okay, I always need wash. No, nah, he just he gets he because gets upset because I don't wash. We gotta sell like don't wash properly. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, you guys live together, but I'm sure like I know what it's like. I've lived now, with Brazilians. I know what it's exactly what it's like. You know what's hard when you have this talk about culture mm-hmm. because Troy is Australian, I'm Brazilian, mm-hmm. so we live different. It's of course we mm-hmm. came from different culture. Oh. So when you start to cook together, you know like. He, he brings some, some kind of foods I never saw in my life. So I, I tried to cook him, for him some Brazilian dish, mm. like feijoada, you know. Right? Tried to, yeah. You, I, cook, you cook? I am cook really well. Tell him. Probably. Yeah, man. He, he cooks. Because yeah. he leaves half the mess on the bench. <laughs> I cook you clean, you're right? No, exactly. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Good. Fair enough. So I tried to show him some Brazilian culture. Mm. And try have been like Brazilian culture. He's half Brazilian. He, d- he don't want to say that, but. He's half Brazilian. Brazilians he has Brazilian to soul. adopt other people to be Brazilians. Yeah. I've noticed that. They're very, they're <laughs> you try cool. to take them on board as much as you can. Yeah, man. They've got a cool culture. It's, it's, it's beautiful. good, huh? Like, they're definitely welcoming. That's for sure. I love it. Yeah. I, I mean, I love. I always get along with Brazilians. I've been to Brazil twice. I went for the World Cup um, two years ago in 2014. And I went earlier this year for um, a friend's wedding. And I'm going again in February, as you guys know, for a Brazilian kind of Watch out, girls. This yeah, guy's so, coming. So I'm going to Rio and Salvador for Carnival. Um, as Ian's warned me numerous times, apparently Salvador is... It's a great party, man. He's... Crazy. Apparently, <laughs> apparently I'll be getting into fights, hooking <laughs> up, coming back with... It. I don't know. Just everything and anything. I, wanna, I want you to see if, by your eyes. Yeah. When you come, you tell me what you think. Okay, how, how, how was your experience? I'll be snapped But I'm sure it would be a great, man, a oh, great experience. I can't wait. I'm North, gonna... North, North is awesome, man. Yeah. Warm peoples, yeah. you know, good food, 
you know, you, you can easily have a talk with anyone, mm -hmm. you know, it's great people. People from North, on my opinion, I want to say that it's my opinion, people from North are, are yeah. better. You know, they are more warm. <laughs> Rio, Rio, when I've been, the people have been a little bit more snobby. You know what this means? Yeah, like exactly. Little, yeah. Um, whether it's because it's a, more of an uptown city, but uh, everyone's been telling me Salvador because it's a little bit, uh, it's actually where Carnival originated from. Is that right? It's, it's originated from overseas. Yeah. So Carnival is not Brazilian traditional, yeah. but... Of course, Salvador is the biggest one. They originated yeah. the first one. Rio, yeah. maybe Rio and Salvador is the biggest one. Yeah. Salvador is a good street party. Mm -hmm. Rio is more the, the typical carnival we, we're watching on TV. Mm -hmm. You know, all these cars and, you know, fantasies. Mm -hmm. uh, Salvador is more pure music, street party, you know, people's having a great time. Mm -hmm. And it's more popular, mm -hmm. I, I want to say. Nice. Carnival is more popular. I'm definitely, than, yeah, I'm definitely Salvador. looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to be Snapchatting, like I said, the whole experience. So <laughs> if you want to follow the journey, um, have me on Snapchat. It should be good fun. Um, going on to about how I met Ian. So Ian came down to the club approximately about a year ago One now. One year, exactly. He came, down, he came down to the club and I just looked at him and said, who the fuck is that monster? Because you can't tell because he's sitting down at six foot five. What are you? I'm big, man. Two he's, meters. Yeah, I don't want to say tall. He's a tall, he's a tall guy. And so, I don't know, Habby, our, uh, our gym owner, didn't ex give us any warning a new coach was coming down. So, Habby apparently rolled with you a few days prior, said, do you, do you want to come down? You did. And everyone at the club has honestly loved you down there. They've actually, honest, I'm not just saying this because you're sitting here. They've honestly said you're one of the best coaches we've ever had. Um, definitely one of the best coaches I've ever had. Um, very friendly guy to talk to. Very knowledgeable about... Um, life in general about uh certain experiences that take a while kind of to you know to foresee in life kind of you have to experience he's he's kind of experienced them all and i'm sure traveling to australia has given you a perspective like no other man sure i, I like to test myself mm. so when i decide to to learn english mm. properly because it's a mandatory discipline in brazil in the mm. schools mm -hmm. but i wasn't a yeah. most dedicated student mm -hmm. so i learned a little bit english mm -hmm. but as soon as i decide to learn the proper english i decide to to move for other country to to feel really what is really the language mm -hmm. and <clears throat> australia was a good choice because the environment here is pretty close to brazil i mean so as soon as i came to australia uh, the first thing i, I look for for something some place to train mm -hmm. so then i went to facebook uh, I searched for the jiu-jitsu schools here, and then I'm, I so talked first. So you didn't know anyone at all prior to coming? At all, man. At really? all. I even know where I decided to come to Perth. Why did you Perth? Yeah, because all Brazilians usually go to Sydney. I'd, a friend of mine came here first. I, I should meet him here, but he decided back to Brazil. So when he came there, he started to talk really bad about Perth. Oh, really? Yeah, Perth Tell is me bad. Tell me it's not like a bag. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Perth, Perth is bad. Perth is, is cold. Uh, it's not good. It's not there all. And on my mind, I say, you know what, man? I'm going there. And then I want to I wanna see by my eyes yeah. how it is. And then I could feel it's a different, it's a different culture, for sure. But as soon as you start to learn English, you start to learn more the culture. Because the... All the all the, the language came from the demand, you know. Mm -hmm. For example, we know this is a couch. So for me it's sofa. Mm -hmm. In Portuguese it's sofa. Yes. For his couch. Yes. You know, so you can translate the word, but you cannot translate the meaning. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you start to understand what the people are saying, not not just the pure translation, mm -hmm. but the meaning about the words, you start to get the culture. So then man, I'm I fell in love about Australia, especially for the peoples, because where are you from, Sina? Iran originally. No. Yeah. You no. Know, uh, Troy, Troy lives is here, but he's from New South Wales, the best place in Australia to live. What so, town are you from? Coffs Harbour. Okay, nice. Yeah. So then I, I meet nobody here, so I decide to to come by myself and and check. Mm -hmm. Would be a good test. I like to test myself. Yeah. And then I, I look some some place to train. So then I meet Fabio from Jeff Team, mm -hmm. and he received, he received me really well. 
And there I meet other guy, and then we went to hang out one day, and then I meet uh, Mohammed. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Mohammed? Yeah. Tough guy, purple belt. Mm -hmm. And then he invited me to train at Moa. And then I meet William, William Gius. Yes. And then he invited me to train at Goere Gym, his mm -hmm. dad. Mm -hmm. I was received really well there. And then I meet Habis there. Yeah. So you understand all the yeah, process, Scottish, man. It was, yeah. was really fun. Everything run well for me here in Australia. Was, Everyone was just warm and kind of just You know, connected. yeah, amazing. Amazing. You know, just jiu-jitsu community, man. You know yeah. how it is. Jiu-jitsu community is really strong. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you are from Brazil, you are from Australia. Mm -hmm. If you train jiu-jitsu, we are talking the same language. Yeah. So English wasn't a problem on that time because, man, you are training jiu-jitsu. Yeah. But it's funny, remember my, my first class M1? Do you remember, yeah. man, it was terrible. Well, I think you were just more nervous than anything. I think a lot of times when people learn languages, I think it's mm. a matter of confidence of yeah, actually sure. pronouncing the words. And that's yeah. why I always say a few drinks actually goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it actually, you get, you get the, you've got the confidence, confidence to exactly. uh, um, speak your mind and be relaxed, you know? And anyway, my, my vocabulary was too short. Yeah. No, all I learned about English came from my school, mm -hmm. so it wasn't a proper English. I know basic verb verb to be, for example, but not nothing a deep vocabulary, you know, yeah. like wrist, elbows, shoulders, something you really need to teach jujitsu, yeah. for example. Yeah. I wasn't had this this knowledge. So, so for tell us like for people listening, um, watching at home. Tell us about your jiu-jitsu experience. What made you get into jiu-jitsu? So, um, I know the story, but you can share. So for people who don't know, Ian's actually a black belt already, even as, as young as he is. How old were you when you got your black belt? 21. 21. And you 21. started jiu-jitsu when you were? Four. Four. So yeah. actually all my life, it yeah. wasn't a choice. Yeah. Your father is a... Yeah, my, my, my dad is my master. Yes. So he's... He's a judo black belt. He's a jiu-jitsu black belt. He trained in capoeira for a while. So fights pretty much is my life, is my family life. All my brothers do, you know, all, all, all our plays we do in a family. Is Everyone's just jiu-jitsu galore. Fight. Yeah. Even, even, not just jiu-jitsu, but fight. <laughs> it's just actually, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Fights, yeah. <laughs> this is a good yeah. joke in the family. So then I started training judo, actually, at four, uh, with Tranquilini. Mm -hmm. Sensei Tranquilini. Okay. Send a hug for him. So, and then I started to train with judo. I'm still love judo. I'm still loving judo. Judo keeps me really young. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really passionate because at my, at my point of view, we don't have any difference between jiu-jitsu and judo. Really? It's a, it's a, yeah, no, of course not. Is, first, the, is the culture the same in terms of? No, first because what came to Brazil wasn't jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. was, was judo, yes. you know, was Jiu-Jitsu Jigoro Kano. Mm -hmm. You know, Jigoro Kano is the, the judo creator. Okay. So, oh, it's a long history yes. to talk about Jiu-Jitsu, but let's back to my history. So then, my dad, at, when I was 11, 12, he decided, now you are focused on Jiu-Jitsu and Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. So then I started to train at the same time Jiu-Jitsu and Muay Thai. But for me, it was more interesting fighting Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe because my dad was my master, so I want to... You know, try something different. Mm -hmm. You never want to follow your dads, yeah. you know? You, you want to do something different. You want to, you know, stand out. It's better, yeah, it's definitely better to branch out and try different things, yeah. you know? So then I started to dedicate more to Muay Thai. Great sport. Mm. But after a while, like four years, you learn every, pretty much everything. Mm. You learn how to punch. You learn Elbow. how to defend elbows, you know? You know, pretty much all techniques. And you, you just make you sharp, mm -hmm. but the techniques you already know. Mm -hmm. And jiu-jitsu was different. Jiu-jitsu every day is a, something new to learn. You know, a white belt to can came a, and bring a technique for you, mm -hmm. something really new mm -hmm. you never even see before. You know, something you know, amazing, man. Where, mm -hmm. where, where, how do you find that? Yeah. Ah, I, I went to YouTube and type it in and, and, yeah. type and it was there, you know? So, Jiu-jitsu is amazing because I have two meters, Troy, less. So my jiu-jitsu is different than Troy. Yeah. So this is amazing. Yeah. You know, everyone definitely uses their attributes in different ways. It's your way. body, man. It's Small your body. Guys, big guys, everyone's your got rules. their uh, special the tools that you got on. Exactly. I always find it's actually harder to roll with smaller guys than it is with bigger guys. Because I find with bigger guys, they'll essentially go off more power, which I can power because I'm a bigger guy. Power for power, I can understand. But when I'm rolling with a little guy, and he's working in the pockets very well, knee and 
And it's so much harder for me to pass a smaller guy than it is a bigger guy. It's a, it's a leverage concept. Yeah. You know, when you want to ch- change your will, <coughs> you use a big tool to make it easy. Mm-hmm. It's the same. It's easy to get a big arm. Yeah. You know, the guy have a short arm, you need more energy, you know, the leverage is small. Mm. So, of course, small people yeah. have this privilege. It's, it's, it's not easy to be a big guy in jiu-jitsu, man. Yeah. It's big rooms, you know, big gaps. My elbows would yeah. my elbows arm is there. agree with you right now because right yeah. now they're not feeling the best, but... The um, so you pretty much like your father kind of encouraged you to keep it up, or you just kinda, nah, he you forced just, me. He just forced you. But yeah, <laughs> you're kind of grateful he did in a way because I Man, mean it's perfect. probably taught you so many life lessons along the way. No, besides, because this is the thing with jujitsu, and I try to. It's it's kind of hard to explain to a lot of people who don't practice the sport, but you learn a lot from people's personality through jujitsu. And the, we were talking about this a few weeks ago. You Man, know? you are touching. Mm. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a touchy sport. Mm. So if you came to me training with, uh, I don't know, a, a bad energy, mm. let's say, bad energy, and then we start to roll, I can feel you, mm. you know? I know you have bad intentions with me. At the same if you get a good energy, oh, I want to do a good ten, training with Ian. Man, when I touch you, I can feel that, you know? And after the training, you have a connection with this other person. Mm. And then we start to talk like we do, you know? This, this is not just here, man. All gyms, when the f- training finish, like 30 minutes, so just talk, sitting, talk with your friends, you know, spending good time with your friends. This is normal because we create a connection. Mm. So then, man, I have opportunity to meet you, to, yeah. to meet Troy, you know, some, know something different. Like, I don't know, Troy can tell me, we never told me before. I know Troy one year and one day he feel comfortable to, in a training because he had a good training. He's... You know he's happy, and then he decides to sh- to open his heart for me. Yeah. You know, even b- because when you are a teacher, man, you you listen more than when you are a student. Mm. Especially when because English is not my my natural language, mm. so I pretty much listen more than I talk. So f- it's always good listen people. You know, that that's it. It's it's good to to learn. Yeah. You know. When you create this connection with other people, it's much easier to talk. It's, you know, it's your friend. Yeah. It's your friend. You, you, you try to yeah. choke him seven minutes. You try to kill each other, really. You know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's essentially what a tap is. A tap <laughs> is essentially, I'm going to either kill you or break a limb. But that's in the I friendliest way. I give you the opportunity way. to I, give up. In the nicest way. In yeah. the <laughs> nicest way possible. Yeah, exactly. But it's essentially, you know, if you're going to rear naked choke someone, it's essentially saying we train to actually kill, but... That's why it's very different to other martial arts because with other martial arts, whether it's boxing, karate, judo, whatever, I've come come to realize there's no actual finished result. Like to punch someone is to punch someone. It doesn't necessarily mean you get the knockout, mm-hmm. you know. But with jiu-jitsu, it's always, it's actually clinically effective. Efficient. efficient. You, need, you need to be efficient. The result is an end. Yeah. You know, it's someone coming at you, throwing punches. Perfect, you, you take him down, you will finish that fight. And that's something that's really just changed the MMA game completely because a lot of guys that would be good fighters weren't able to close the deal until, you know, obviously when UFC came along and the Gracies and they shocked the world, obviously. I mean, it's crazy. I mean... In how- Jiu-Jitsu, is still shocking people. Yeah. It's still... Like, like I told you, Jiu-Jitsu is always improving. Mm. Improving. Like a couple of years ago, what is 50-50? The yeah. guard. Yeah. Half guard. At, at my dad's age, even half guard. Really? Half guard was in a position. Really? Yeah. And now, man, we can sweep in a half. They do everything now. Everything. No. The worm guard as well? Did they? Warm. <laughs> at my dad's age, what is warm? Worm guard, you know? yeah. A lot of people who don't understand this worm is, guard this, is when, this, it's when you use the person's lapel and kind of use it's. Kenan Cornelius. Y- it? Yeah. Some of the high level guys kind of. Now, come on, it. explain what is the warm guard? It's using the lip, it's using the lapel to kind of um, kind of like a spider guard, similar, but it's um, you're using the lapel, kind of taking it out of the the belt, um, yeah. kind of being tucked in, and wrapping around the person's arm. It's kind of very complicated to describe. If you but this think. is funny because what you described me was a guard, but it was a normal guard. Why you need given names? Well, but who, got, who developed one guard? I can't. I couldn't tell was you. It Ke- was it what, Keenan Cornelius? Could be Keenan Cornelius, go? but let's suppose 30 years ago someone did before. And, and it just caught on. Yeah, he, he, he just didn't give a name. Mm. Mm. You know? 
like the the De La Riva guard. Mm -hmm. De La Riva is a fam is a famous uh, jiu jitsu mm. jiu jitsu teacher, jiu jitsu master in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Man, really respectful. But you you have some footage about the old judo. They do in De La Riva guard. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, it's not really? familiar. Yeah, it's really hard to say I invented something because. You are not the only one training jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Something else maybe well, even the, the UFC, the last one I watched, I showed, I, we were talking about it, the Rat Guard. Um, so <laughs> that, what? Yeah, the Rat, rat Guard. guard. <laughs> it's, just, it's pretty much a rubber guard, but the difference is the guy who kind of um, who kind of invented it, he, he had a motorcycle accident. His hips weren't very flexible. Yeah. So instead of getting your, um, your shin or your calf all the way up to the guy's neck, right. it's basically just up to his shoulder. And... Um, it's kind of like a guillotine where you're coming um, over the head, but you're wrapping it in the in the thigh or in the calf. Okay. And um, there was a guy who did it in the UFC. Oh, he, he did a really good sweep from it, from the sweep. He went mount. I can't remember the, what he did with it, but he ended up finishing yeah, the guy yeah. from some kind of um, submission. But something I never saw before. And then I came to class and Ian, what the hell is rat guy? He's like, rat guy. <laughs> and then we're like, we just started talking about it. But Maybe that's the thing, you. like you say, like for especially martial arts it's it's only of late like in the last yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. 20 years especially with internet now and ah, yeah, yeah, television yeah. coverage that everyone starts to realize what's efficient what's not efficient all the bullshit's coming out the window you know some things a lot of times like it, it's funny you see these videos of uh people maybe 10 20 years ago using their karate uh what do you call it the energy where the key the key is it? Yeah. yeah, where you would knock someone out without it even touching it. Could be both. <laughs> <laughs> it's but it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? I mean, but trying to keep up with the amount of new moves that are coming through with jujitsu these days, like trying to keep up with technology. Yeah, it's, it's just changing all the time. There's a new move coming out every week. Yeah, because there's always a counter to a counter, and then that counter. That's what I'm too. saying. Maybe it's not new. Yeah. Just because you have internet now. Yeah. You know. You know how we knew. How we 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 get in touch with new positions all the time? It's magazine. Yeah. Yeah. Man, how hard it is you try to, to read a lot yeah. in a magazine? Yeah. Pictures, yeah. like six pictures. I yeah. have six friends. Happy's yeah. got this book. I've always looked at it. It's always it's always funny to me. It's like a thousand submissions. <laughs> thousand and one. It's a thousand and one <laughs> submission. It's like this thick. <laughs> I've never read it, but I've always just wanted to look at it. Actually, I think I opened it once and had a look. I was like Man, it's with, hard. With so what pictures. are they up to now? <laughs> no idea. Man, I mean, with pictures, it's very hard. Obviously, with YouTube now, it's obviously a lot of... It's a big advantage for people trying to learn jiu-jitsu and um, introducing but new techniques. I'm really glad that my time, we don't have uh, internet mm -hmm. because then I just listen, listen pretty much my dad. So my dad created my style. So I, I developed my, my style like... What would you say? I would consider it an armbar specialty, considering how many times you catch me in an armbar. But what what would you what would you say your style is if you had to describe it in a jiu jitsu way? Because you you won't teach what you know. Mm -hmm. So my dad pretty much just teach him what he's know, you know. So like pre pressure pass, you know, all this kind of stuff. So I just listen to my dad. I just listen to one coach, you know. But today. If you, I teach you something, you can go to your home and check on you, internet and get your opinion, mm -hmm. your own opinion about the position. And then you can bring to me. And then I will say to you, well, this could be good or, could, or not, mm -hmm. you know, but it's about you. Mm -hmm. So I, I have, even have this opportunity. So all what my dad teach me, I learn. Yeah. You know? So it was good at this point because I'm, 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 I'm truly representing about constrictor jiu-jitsu, say so what what is good. And now I'm I'm learning different different situations, mm -hmm. but on my opinion, the, the people should care less about what they watching on internet because your professor know who you are, mm -hmm. your professor know your personality. So sometimes you are you man, you simply don't have flexibility enough to do a bearing ball. You know, and you want to learn a bearing ball. Mm. Your master came to you and say, bearing ball is not for you. Mm -hmm. You know, could be hard for, for the student listen to this. You know, no, I want to do a bearing ball. Man, but sometimes... Well, at least learn the defense. You know? is, 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 is other problem, you know. Yeah. Sometimes when I have some students want to teach something, you, you, you don't agree, you know, what you, your friends are teaching, but... Is, 
Is okay. You don't think it's not worth the student working that out for himself, though? It's good. It's good. But listen to your coach first. You know, you, you can hurt yourself. You can hurt yourself, man. Definitely. Like heel hooks. If you wanna if you wanna learn heel hooks, don't learn by yourself. You know, ask ask for a black belt to teach you. That's why the people's got the black belt to teach properly. Yeah. You know, it's like ten years teaching, ten years training, ten years learning what is jujitsu, the philosophy, all the concepts, the leverage, and then you bring for a safe way. Yeah. You know? Well like like you said, cer certain submissions actually have how would you put this? A different way of getting to a hundred percent. Being a hundred percent being um, the finish, and some finishes you can have a fifty percent submission, and then some you just have zero or a hundred. Example: If you're doing an armbar, you know if the guy's getting your arm, it's slowly straightening out. The guy doesn't need to crank it all the way and hyper extend your elbow for mm -hmm. it to happen. You know at that range that okay, this guy's going to get the armbar. You don't. It's fine. Yeah. The problem you have with heel hooks and a lot of these leg locks, you fit like, I can't remember who it was I was listening to describing. They said like, if you do like an armbar submission, it's kind of like your finger going backwards of flexibility. You have a good range of motion mm -hmm. and you can defend at least. But the problem with the heel hooks and the leg locks is instead of going um, backwards, it goes sideways and it just snaps. Mm. And you don't exact, exactly get a moment to tap because once it goes, it goes. And then once it's on, it's on. It's exactly. Once it's on, yeah, it's on. Yeah, yeah. And unless the guy's smart enough to realize this is going to... Yeah, but yeah, yeah. like, you know, in competitions, it can happen so quickly. And then yeah, imagine yeah. a white belt. He yeah. even know with how, how strong he is, yeah. you know? And then it came and boom, do the position, man. It's, it's, it's bad. It's, yeah. it's actually more dangerous rolling with a white belt than it is with a black belt. Yeah, because yeah, they actually, don't know their limits. Man, my my ear is fine, but pretty much all my ears are broken by white belts. Really? Yeah. They came and punched me, man. <laughs> yeah, knees and... Yeah. Black belts go easy. Brown belts go... N not easy, but they know why to put hands, you yeah. know. You know how to avoid your friend to... to to be you know what it's like injured. being a white belt. You got all that adrenaline pumping through you your wanna system. You want to do, man. You, you want to do. You want to do. You haven't learned how to just to relax <laughs> and play until you get Pure to mangro. near your blue belt. Pure mangro, mangro yeah. man. It's because you yeah. get so hyper. You still want to prove. It's really unfair to talk white belt. Let's say a certain time of training. Well, someone yeah. who's a week into training, like you've just started, they're a week into training. They just they're the worst ones to roll with, I find, because they're just going a hundred. <laughs> yeah, everyone, an anyone who's done jujitsu would. Yeah, but cause, I mean, it's, I mean, man, I'm a bigger guy. Imagine how bad I was. Probably the first time I started, I probably just try to use all my strength until I kind of people just just for laugh. I remember seeing yeah, that. Yeah. I was I probably a lot time, worse than yeah. I was probably. Yeah. Breathe, <laughs> breathe, relax, flow. But yeah, it's it. it yeah, I think it's once that kind of. That ego goes out the door with the white belt, you know, and you start to realize oh, yeah. there's more to this. Yeah. And you ego, start to discover. Ego, yeah. yeah. Why do you think this is, uh, I've always, this is something I always find fascinating. Why do you think a lot of people at blue belt, they step aside from jujitsu? It's at a blue belt, you know, once they, cause in people who aren't aware, so there's a white belt, obviously your starting belt, blue, purple, brown, and black. So it's pretty much a lot of you find a lot of people once they go from white to blue, they're like, yep, that's good enough for me. And they step aside instead of actually a, really adopting and embracing the culture and really, I mean, I, I personally love Jiu Jitsu. I'm going to do it until I'd rather do Jiu Jitsu when I'm 60, 70 years old than play golf. You know what I mean? If my body can keep up, I'd, I'd, but you see it, it's for someone who's in a, someone who's a black belt and you've obviously seen a lot of people in the gym coming down, learning. Yeah. Why do you think that is? So first I will bring the fault for the professor mm -hmm. because you need cultivated the person to keep training, okay? But pretty much the problem is to get a, a blue belt, you need at least two years, mm -hmm. you know? To get a purple belt, four years. For how long you study in a uni to get a, a certificate? The degree is like four years at least, minimum. Four years at least, yeah. you know? What's the the Susef, the Susex in a in, um, in, um, black success, right? Success in the jiu-jitsu when you got the black belt. Yes. Man, you need eight years. Yeah. You know? So a people is used to get a certificate in four years, for example, you know? When they realize they are even a halfway, yeah. man, I, I give up. Yeah. You know, because they, they are not 
interesting about the process. They are not interested about the how good he get. You know, he just won a black belt because this is the the result. Yeah. You know, you training black belt. This is the the wrong way to think, but that's the result. Black belt, yeah. man. After four years, you get you are in, in the blue belt. Yeah. What do I mean? I'm in the second belt. <laughs> you know, five belts. I'm in the second belt, yeah. man. It's not worth. So many people give up. All my opinion is, is that way. Is the, is the, is the, the, yeah, is, the, is this. That's the reason. Do, have you seen anyone... Because um, I remember this happened once. You can ask for a try why he left Jiu-Jitsu. Why you give up about Jiu-Jitsu? I just, jiu -jitsu I just got burnt out. Seriously, I just got burnt out. Yeah, you, would you say you've given up at this point? Or no, are you just taking a break? I haven't given I think up. Give up but yeah. No, I don't I think he's given, given up. up. I, think I, had a, I was having a break and I just got started back doing no gi again. Yeah. And then I hurt my knee rolling with him. Yeah. So I've and been funny out enough, he's hurt his wrist. Yeah. So that was the same day, wasn't Karma it? Karma goes around. Yeah. You hurt I, he first, hurt my knee and then no, I hurt No, 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 you hurt me first. You hurt me first. That's what I was That was But yeah, unfortunately. Not true. Okay. But yeah, it's it's always interesting to see uh, someone who's um, got years on, to see the reason behind people. It's too long, man. It's, oh, it's man. A, it's a long process. Me, like when Brian was here, me, Reagan and Brian, we were down at the gym like four o'clock every afternoon training. And then Tuesday, Thursday, we we're doing the 6.30 class. Like we were flogging ourselves. Yeah. And then when Brian sort of moved away and Reagan was getting a bit busy, I was just, we were all fried, okay. yeah. you know. And then, you know, work sort of seeps into your lifestyle and mm. you got all these other little That's variables. That's why I, I that just started in. training jiu-jitsu in, in my teenage. Mm. My, my dad decided let he do what he want before. Yeah. Because if we start too early, yeah. you get burned. Mm. You know, mm. you get sick. I was going down there, man, and Happy was talking and I was just like a zombie. It was, I was just turning up for the sake of turning up. Yeah. But now, like, been going back and doing the no gi, I've got that fire again you know I'm, yeah. until i hurt my knee but tonight was awesome like just doing technique and rolling light what's your um in what's your opinion on on no gi no gi yeah and gi yeah i mean gi is obviously a, a far more traditional some people completely like you know like eddie bravo and stuff they yeah completely, just, okay it's not that they is they trying to insult i think a lot of people take it the wrong way they're like mm -hmm trying to turn their back on jiu-jitsu i don't think like from listening listening to his interviews and talking about jiu-jitsu he's obviously he's a black belt high level he loves jiu-jitsu but he, yeah i think he's focusing more on an mma jiu-jitsu you know mm. i mean do you think there's a balance what do you what's your take on no gi well because my jiu-jitsu what i use for a gi i can use for no gi i know i we have pretty much same positions because uh, my dad don't have these two the two tips, you know the the crocodile bit him. Are you so serious? He, yeah. So a crocodile lost, bit off his finger. Yeah. So he don't have pretty much a good grip. And uh, wait a second. Go back. Tell me the story before we continue. Yeah, he wanna handle a crocodile and the crocodile bit his. Just hand. in a park or something? Nah, he worked in the zoo. Okay. So he went to to handle a crocodile to do some some exam. Yeah. And then the crocodile bite bite his Jesus. finger. So he don't have good grip, yes. so pretty much just use cup cup yep. grips. And this other finger, a snake bite him as well. So the, <laughs> <laughs> same zoo, same zoo. How, how long before he realized maybe I shouldn't be doing this? <laughs> he he liked man. <laughs> did he, did he, what, nah, he, he stopped. He he don't he doesn't work more. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> crocodiles and snakes biting. Nah, I but think he, that's time to call it. Quits. He doesn't he doesn't work in the zoo more, but he still he catches crocodiles. Yeah, he, he loves it sometimes. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's his he job. He loves animals, huh? What does he do? He he. People call him up and they say, yeah. we've got crocodiles where they shouldn't be. And he goes and catches them and then... Really? Them yeah, them. we need your help. You yeah. should come down to Australia. He'll love it out here. No, man, here's too big. Shoot, <laughs> really? Here's too big. From... No, uh, yeah. I want to bring him to... He's love it. Crocodiles yeah. For sure, man. For sure. In the snakes. My, my dad's really passionate about snakes. Wait a second. I, I just want to ask you this quickly because I just remembered. You made that video and you posted it up and I... he Ian made for people who... He, okay, he made yeah of course he made this um this video about his adventures in australia 
<clears throat> you had like four or five snakes in these videos. Where the hell did you see? I've, I've been here for 20 years. I haven't seen one wild snake. When you, look. like when you have a new car yeah. and oh, my car is great. And then you start to see other cars, the same cars in the street. Yeah. Same, when, when, you ha when you like snakes, you start to look for the, for the snakes. So where are you, where are you catch, going and catching these snakes? Where is the snake? The snake is there, man. It's always there. But you're just looking for them. Yeah, you, you, you walk and looking for the floor, looking for the snakes. When you start to look for the snake, you'll find the snakes. <laughs> you're not scared because you're picking them up by the tails and holding them up and everything. <laughs> There's none of there, is it? Have no. you seen any snakes? <laughs> we, we have a bobtail at, at, yeah, in yeah. the garden, you know? Man, I hate a what? Tails. We have a bobtail in the garden. What's a bobtail? It's like a little lizard. A blue tongue. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. He, they're he, they're he around the Scabra area. Yeah. He lives yeah, there. Yeah, he yeah. lives in the, in the garden. They're not, they just bite super hard, don't they? I don't know. I hate that. Nah, reptiles. really lazy. Mm, really kind. It's a kind animal. That's, why, get, that's why he loves them. It's your little pet, <laughs> it's your little pet now, huh? Yeah, it's my, my free pet. What do you call it? <laughs> an est. An est. Ernesto, this is a Brazilian name. <laughs> Say again. Ernesto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably saying something rude. No, Ernesto is fine. You know, I never teach in Alpha Rome, man. No. Uh, yeah. Like Jeff, you know, little Jeff? Yeah, of course. No, he's he naughty, man. Don't ever right. listen to anything he says when it comes to like teaching you Just Portuguese bad words. words. Really? Yeah. He's supposed to teach you something good, but it's bad. Yeah, always. You bad. Always naughty. He's a little troublemaker, huh? <laughs> Yeah. And he's the last person you'd actually think he would teach you something about. You're like, oh, no, Jeff is going to teach me. Like, you, if you taught me a word, I'd be like, I'm going to find out. You know, Jeff. it's really unfair, man. Yeah, but you have that cheeky face, you know what I mean? Whereas <laughs> Jeff, he actually looks like he's not going to teach you anything rude. He's Asian. So he's not serious. Yeah, Jeff's, Jeff's Asian, he's Balinese. <laughs> he could pass for anything, actually. Filipino, he could. He could so, pass for anything. Yeah. Well, when we were in Bali, when we were in Bali recently, all the Balos thought he was Balinese. And he started to talk Bahasa with him. Really? He yeah. was walking down the street and they were all waving to him <laughs> like he was a local. Jesus. But anyway, snake is fine for me. We, we grow with snakes. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a couple of pet snakes. Yeah. Back in home. Tell me, tell me back about back home about, because you're from Brasilia. I'm from Brasilia. Good to see you. It's it's my best shirt. It's reversed. It's confused me. Really? When you look in the mirror, it, looks when you look in the mirror, it makes sense, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I said like Alistair Brady or something. <laughs> so I'm from Brasilia. Yeah. The, the capital for a lot the of people. The capital, yeah. yeah. They, they move the capital from Rio. Yeah. So Brasilia was planted. Mm. So we'll be Brazilian, all Brazilian in five years. Really? Is, is it's great. Because I've actually been to Brasilia. It's very similar to actually Canberra, which I don't know if you've been to Canberra. Oregon, no, no, It's basically yet. they just made this new city completely um, just for the government uh, infrastructure, government yeah, offices. Much, and yeah, Yeah, it's, everything's very proper. It doesn't look like any other Brazilian city. No, no. Um, I asked you what was it like living there because I thought a city like Canberra, for example, would be super quiet, super chill. Everyone's uh, got their high power job. Everyone's relaxed. Well, Canberra's not the not the well, most popular place in Australia. Exactly. <laughs> and then you told me something that Brazil actually blew, same. blew yeah. my mind. Tell me about Brazil. Well, tell people about Brazilia. So because every, everybody say Brazil is bad. Yeah. Everybody say Brazil just have politician politi politicians politicians. Yes. Yeah. You know, just shit happened there. But not true, man. Brazil is beautiful. If you know Brazil well, if you know Brazil deeply, you'll fall in love with Brazil. Because Bra Brazil is from, is from Cerrado. You know, Brazil is on, on Cerrado. So Cerrado is like a sa savanna. It's a kind of savanna, mm -hmm. but with more animals, with more nature. And Brazil is, is really blessed. Brazil has heaps of waterfalls. So... Man, I, I don't know how to, to, to what to say about Brazil. I'm just saying Brazil is You're talking great. something very funny, though, about... Because I thought everyone would... You know, is a bit more... Uh, kind of a higher <clears throat> class person that, you know, they wouldn't be into the, the street fighting as much as other Brazilian cities. But you told me that everyone was... Everyone gets so bored, they actually just end up going on the streets. They're like, let's just go. Let's just keep fighting. Not more because yeah. my, 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 my generations are quite soft you now, yeah. but at my dad's age, terrible, man. It's pretty much just, just men's in the city. 80% <laughs> of the population was men's. So really, can you imagine what's happening if you 
but too much testosterone together. Fight. So what, what is it now? Not now. It's alright. We we still haven't fight, but not not like in the old age. B before it was one by one. Yeah. You know. No, especially Brazil is, Brazil is like famous for these, uh, like these one-on-one -on -one fights. I mean, everyone's like me, you, yep, yeah, let's go right now. Like, you let's know, I haven't seen it really in a lot of cultures really where they just throw down and they say, all right, you guys. Well, it, used, every, it used, that's how it used to happen. Like, oh, man, was it, yeah. was it like that back in Australia? I don't know, because I came into yeah. Australia yeah, like 94, it didn't. I mean, with Australia, what I found was <clears> cameras and everything now, everyone's kind of like. You know, I think there. it's got worse in the last. 15 maybe 15 20 years yeah i find that everyone actually fights in number like bigger groups now than actually one-on-ones which is what i tend to see in brazilian well, when i was growing up you know like if you want to punch on with someone it'd be one-on-one -on -one. yeah but i know like my younger brother's age group like 24 it's a lot different now it's like you you, you there's no one-on-one -on -one. it's like you fight group against group yeah, yeah this is bad and, this and is very king dangerous, hit yeah. so many people are getting king hit these days yeah because the fights in Brazil can, Brazil have strong fight culture. Mm. You, know? you guys just love it. It's in your culture, yeah. It's bad to say. I don't want to say it in front of cameras. Yeah, but, but it's it's true. It's true. You know, it's true. we like fight, man. Yeah, we, we like to. Pure is simple. Yeah. we like to fight. Mm. Fortunately, today we have a good ways to to release this feeling, mm. so we can go to jujitsu, train, yeah. with training. Clubs, but yeah. at even when jujitsu start. To grow in Brazil, you know. Imagine everybody with this mentality, you know. I, I want to fight. Mm -hmm. You know, starting doing something really powerful mm -hmm. like capoeira or jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Man, messy, yeah. completely messy, man. You know, gyms, gyms start to fight with other gyms. You know, like, oh, my gym is better than yours. Yeah. You know, so, like, you know, my my gym is better. No, my gym is better. Oh, yeah. what, what do you want me, man? Let's fight. Let's fight. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't happen. But now, now, now it's alright. Some, <laughs> some of the my favorite videos on YouTube actually is the ones I some you know when I'm over just on YouTube and going down the rabbit is hole. Hickson fighting in a Hickson's <laughs> definitely there, but not just that. I mean, even before UFC came about, there's videos of um, jiu-jitsu practitioners that would just rock up at gyms, at karate gyms, kung fu gyms, different martial arts, and just say, "Your best guy, who is he?" And he comes out, this big, strong-looking guy. Okay, well, we challenge you to a fight. And they just throw down, they fight. Was that like the Gracie challenge? No, yeah, exactly. It, it was. Was it only the Gracies doing it or were the other families doing it as well? I mean, Gracie's, obviously because of the whole UFC and well, um, that was Helio Gracie. I'm not sure, but that I think That was before just, the UFC, just, wasn't it? The Gracie challenge. Actually, the Gracie did that before with Elio. Yes. They did the same. Yes. They sent in, um, in, a, in a newspaper, newspaper yes. you know? Like, if, if you think you are tough, came to test you. Yeah just yourself so that is a, a gracie culture do that so yes. when they move to america mm -hmm. to united states they want something to to bring jiu-jitsu up so looks a good way yeah like, that's how the ufc came about yeah yeah that's right yeah we put all together what was it? i think it was eight different martial arts and just see who was a winner unfortunately <laughs> like we knew we knew jiu-jitsu gonna win well that's the thing we were talking about earlier as well about ufc and um, obviously those fights were a lot shorter, but you see now fights, uh, three, five minute rounds or five, five minute exactly. rounds. And it doesn't exactly favor jujitsu guys yeah. at all, or grappling guys, because a lot of times, um, if we're in a fight one-on-one, -on -one, <clears throat> I can have your back or whatever example, obviously with you, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, you can hold off for that five minutes because five minutes isn't exactly a very long time, especially if you start standing and then, you know, it no, does it, it, especially on these days, everybody knows jiu jitsu now. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. It's, it's impossible to fight MMA without yeah. do some, yeah. some, some ground Just work. Just to show or, how good Damien Meyer is. Aren't yeah, you? well, Damien Meyer, amazing. He'll get the guy on the ground. My and, favorite. And even when the rounds are finishing, like Matt Brown, he, I don't know if you saw the Matt Brown fight. Every round, he just kept taking him to the ground. And yeah. every round, he was just dominating. And the third round, he actually got the submission. But then it goes to show how good Rory McDonald is. And that time they fought. Yeah. And he took Rory down the first round and then he couldn't take him down for the second and the third. And yeah. Rory ended up winning that fight, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, with Jiu-Jitsu, it's time limits that doesn't exactly favor it. Like you said yeah. before, Pride rules where it was a first <clears> minute <throat> round. And the second one, five. Five minute rounds. And you'd said 
majority of the fights would actually finish within the first round. Yeah. Because it's actually favoring the grapplers, which is essentially... I'm not a fan of actually um, the rounds. Mm -hmm. I actually believe one continuous fight is actually the best... um, just because yes, you are not a fighter. <laughs> but no, you've had a lot of fighters but, come or, out and say but, that as well. Actually, Troy made a very good point at dinner. Um, or at least when the rounds are finished, you go back to the f- position you started at. So if a guy's got your back or if the guy's got side control, you should start from that position. You shouldn't have the advantage of starting standing again, especially if you're a standing fighter. You know, mm-hmm. it's mm. essentially you're using the benefit of yeah. MMA is a new sport. Yes, you know, just be- became a sport five years ago, six years ago. Before it was value to yeah, you know? bare knuckles for people who don't know what value to mm-hmm. means. No time, you know. It's basically just so throw two guys in the air. Uh, MMA is a new sport, so of course in a few years we will get new rules, new introductions. Yeah, you know? they talk actually about similar to value to rules about. Possibly, I don't know if they'll actually do this. Removing the gloves. Do you uh, think they want to? Well, no, it's not that they want to. They talk about what MMA really is, and MMA is really getting two guys, your skill versus my skills, and seeing what the best outcome is. And essentially, what a glove is is it's actually a protection for your your hands, because a lot of people don't realize if you, you punch break, someone, you break hands, bare knuckle, you're gonna break your hand. If you don't, if you land oh. this part there, you're breaking your hand. You, you essentially have to go eyebrows down. Otherwise, you're going to break your hand. It's crazy to think about, but... For for the athletes... I don't know good. if people are ready for it yet, you know? Because it will be a lot more... Nah, it's, it's, it's old. You know, it's an old rule. Mm. What, what was ugly? Too much blood. Yeah. In the old times, man, too much blood. It's, it's, it's ugly. Barbaric, yeah. You know. Yeah, and that's the thing. People think it's barbaric enough now. Like, how hard is it to get the cage over here? Unfortunately, I'm going to try and start a petition or something. I don't know. Maybe reach out to every, anyone I can. I've seen him. Yeah. You, you go, should. I think they did one a few years ago, but it's ridiculous. I, it's, isn't it only like a thousand or something people need to sign a petition for it to get passed? Or at least the... Um, the state um, minister will have to have it recognized. Yeah, because I mean I don't know if you know Ian, because cages here are actually banned. Yeah. So for example, in Melbourne and uh, I think other states as well, it's legalized. Yeah. So for example, in November I'm going to the UFC in uh, Melbourne, and it's a good event. You know, everyone goes down, no trouble. Everyone's, you know, but you you can have MMA here, but you can't have the fo- uh, the cages. Yeah. Which is what I've spoken about on other podcasts as well, which is stupid because. People fall out of the rings all the time, all the time. When you're grappling, it's your Who decided that don't have the knowledge? Well, the Simple. person who decided is our, our it's minister. Colin Barnett. It's Colin Barnett, and he's just he never done he's never done jujitsu. It never went to an actual vote. That was a problem as well. <laughs> a lot of these things, it's dictatorship in a sense it's of bit, okay. they're just ignorant. They don't want to educate themselves on it. Yeah, it's unfortunately WA is a very. What do they say about us? We're uh, uh, oh. uh, a. <laughs> Uh, wait a while is what WA stands for, isn't it? Yeah, wait a while. So anything that happens, we always take a while to catch on. Yeah, yeah. We're always behind, unfortunately, with with certain laws, with certain things. A lot of things you can see other countries making um, advancements. Uh-huh. It just takes a while before Perth mm. and WA really catches on. So, but getting back to the gloves, the whole point that you know, of the UFC is the ha- and the rules that they got in place mm. is for careers to last. Like, yeah. so you can make a decent career. You can fight as long as possible. You need to protect the athletes, man. It's really hard to be a fighter. Well, what do, do, be- do, do you remember the pride when it was a Grand Prix? Yeah. Man, <laughs> pride was ridiculous. <laughs> man, three fights in one day. Yeah. You get concussed the, and you can still fight. Man, yeah. the most of guys didn't fight the last one. Yeah. They were broken. It was pride for... People who never watched Pride, it's and this, Pride was a, a, similar to a UFC, but it was within a ring in Japan. They didn't have the drug testing they do now, and so everyone was jacked on jet steroids. Yeah. Everyone was a monster. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> just look at over nah, and then look, look at over it. Natural man. man. But even uh, but it was a, even it was an even playing field because everyone was on steroids. Everyone was jacked. So, yeah. so everyone's jacked. You can't say oh you know. It's like the Tour de France. Yeah, exactly. 
I mean, Lance Armstrong, yeah, he got caught, but you had to go down all the way to Lance Armstrong took drugs. Well, yeah, allegedly. Well, some of the writers said you couldn't. Well, you I mean, know, he actually, France you know, you, alleg- you know, he drugs. never, the test never came back. That was blood positive. Doping, wasn't it? He actually ended up admitting it because there was too much problems being caused with the court cases. He actually ended up admitting it. They actually never caught him officially with the. But with, it was too, too much pressure. But hang yeah. on a second. Was it drugs or blood doping? It was EPO. It was, EPO. Blood doping. It was EPO. EPO, yeah. Okay, right. It was EPO. Which. The top 20 guys in the, uh, basically, were, were, were on it. Yeah. And I don't care what you say. To do that now, even, to climb a mountain, you're on something. It's impossible. You can't climb. We're not humanly possible. I mean, you could do it, but not even close to half the time. That you, that it's it's good to it. say that, you know, because athletes is not sign of health. Yeah. Far. Far to be, man. To be a good athlete, man, you need training more than you should. You need eat more than you should. You need, man, you're gonna hurt yourself. Mm. It's really hard to be a top athlete, you know? You need to cook something. You, even, I don't know, su- supplies, normal supplies. Yeah. You, you, you can be pure nature to, to be an athlete. Yeah. You, know? you need me. People always say it's actually the dedication to the sport rather than the talent. Because the talent gets you so far, but the dedication of your nutrition, your training is actually what progresses you sure. to become sure. that next level. And even in supplements, like you say, or testosterone or cheating, and then it becomes a question of like, how far is too far? You know, I'm cheating, but I'm only doing certain things like, like say- The others example, are cheating as well. You know, it, it's always a very fine line, you know, and uh, like, for example, if you're taking creatine, you know, it's it has advantages, but not as much as advantage of like steroids, for example, you know, what's, it's weird to think what's what vending. we allow, what we yeah. don't allow. Like we yeah. said before, it, some things can be very subjective and okay. I think it always stops yeah. when you actually talk about needles. Whenever needles get involved, it seems like the human mind is always like, no, that's too far. Well, what's your opinion?